This episode is brought to you by the Fish Sauce RPG, Unleash the Power of Precision. Our RPG, Rod Precision and Gadget, is the ultimate tool for adjusting Scotty or Fulby rod holders. No more struggles or worn out tools, just smooth, easy adjustments. Elevate your fishing game and shop the RPG now. www.fishsauce.com And now we got a huge shout out to our next sponsor, Cold Water Strong. Cold Water Strong makes high quality gear for boat and bank anglers alike, from flasher bumpers and bank fishing leader kits to kill bags and bleed bags. Cold Water Strong has the gear to make you the hot rod in the boat or on the bank. Get your Cold Water Strong products at local fishing retailers like Bob Sporting Goods in Longview, Anglers Unlimited, previously Angler West in Woodland, and Fisherman Marine and Outdoor. Go visit their website at www.coldwaterstrong.com. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back for another episode of the WetNet Podcast. This is going to be a fun one. We've been trying to put this one together here for a while, and uh, and the stars aligned. We made it happen. Um, sitting here with Keith Archer with the Ultimate Egg Cure, Ultimate Shrimp Cure. How are you doing, man? Thank you for coming on. Yeah, wow. Uh you know, been working on this a while. Mm-hmm. You know, you've been you've been asking, and I've been trying to find the time. I'm a busy man. Yeah. Uh, thank you for making the drive down. Yeah. And uh, yeah. we put this together for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's almost nine o'clock at night, and I've got an energy drink, and <laughs> and, uh, and we're gonna make it happen. So, um, first things first, please follow, subscribe. Yeah. the page you know we're we're growing this thing things are going good we're going constantly every episode and uh and we got some really cool stuff going on here that i'm really happy about yeah um first thing i want to get into here is we'll get into some of our dam counts mm-hmm. because we actually have some stuff happening over the dam right now um to date over or through the second of april We've got a total of 45 fish over Willamette Falls, which isn't, I don't know what the 10-year average looks like on the Willamette Falls. But. I didn't, you know, I didn't look at that. It was just funny enough, you're going to bring that up into this. And I was looking today at Bonneville and I saw it was 105 fish, I think yeah. it's through the third. And yeah, the 10-year average there was 35 fish, Yeah, you know, so triple the 10-year average. Of course, if that could extrapolate itself, that'd mm. be a wonderful thing, but I don't know that that'll actually yeah. lay out that way. Yeah. Um, you want to move that mic just a little bit closer to you there? Yeah, for sure. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. So, all righty. So, yeah, we got 45 fish over the Willamette Falls, and uh, we're at 105 total over yeah. Bonneville. So, yeah. things are shaping out pretty okay. A little bit little bit later run, or how are we looking on time? No, I think we're ahead of pace. You know what I mean? They're going to mm-hmm. show a little bit earlier. We got the water temps are right. The water temps 40, I think 48 last we checked. I haven't been on the Columbia here in a few days but yeah uh yeah that sort of thing that's going to get these fish moving right. it's going to bring them in a tidbit early um there's some earlier stock fish that they release in the upper columbia that tend to turn return earlier mm-hmm. so that's a good thing so yeah. we're seeing some of those fish as well some of the black faces yeah yeah that's awesome um now we got the dam count stuff out of the way i'm not going to dip into the river conditions today we're just going to roll to dam counts and uh mm-hmm. but i do want to go over our cold water strong active giveaway that we have going on um ken was super gracious in uh lining us out with some awesome giveaways and we actually have uh keith lined us out with two bottles of the ultimate trim cure one in the high octane um one in the regular you just call it the regular yeah standard yeah. Yep. ultimate shrimp cure yep yep so mm-hmm. those are included in the giveaway now thank you for that mm-hmm. um in the cold water strong giveaway we have two of these pre-rigged pro troll flashers uh lined out with a 24 inch um flasher bumper and a built-in breakaway with your flasher so that's pretty cool oh yeah those work well yeah yeah you get two of them and uh i want to say he did four of the 18 inch flasher bumpers and four of the 12 inch the the heavy um flasher bumpers for your triangles and stuff Mm -hmm. and then last thing in that giveaway you get that uh the bleed bag oh yeah so and the giveaway is going to be separated one person is not going to win all of this stuff you know guy's going to win some flashers guy's going to win some leaders guys going to win some shrimp cure it's gonna they'll probably give it to four or five different dudes just disperse it yeah um so yeah, to to win that, go to our Facebook page, the Wet Net Weekend Report. Mm-hmm. Um, like the page, share it out there with your friends. Mm-hmm. Go to the post that we put out for episode eight. Mm-hmm. Tag three friends in that post, and then go to Cold Water Strong's um, 
page and like and share that also there you go. And go, go to ultimate shrimp cure ultimate egg cure and uh and like that too because we go. got the shrimp in here now so yes sir yeah absolutely um i think that's all we got for the boring shit now we can get into what everybody came for <laughs> um so let's get into a little bit of background on keith archer man yeah. What, sure. uh, what are you about? What do you know? <laughs> well, that's a great question, right? So, uh, geez, grew up here in Southwest Washington, spent my whole life here in this area. Uh, you know, I had a dad that was an avid fisherman that got me into it. Um, you know, spent, spent my life kind of learning, you know, the Southwest Washington rivers, you know, mm -hmm. my home grounds, the stomping grounds is the Lewis river. A lot of people would know that and that, uh, live here in the area and have seen me up there and, uh, experienced some of the successes I've had up there. Yeah. Uh, you know, this, over time, it's the time flies. I'm 48 now, you know, I'm mean, looking back and I can remember the first fish I ever caught. I, I, you know, when I was eight years old, I remember rowing a drift boat at the age of 12, Yeah. you know, and it's, you look at kids these days and like at the age of 12, are they, what are they doing? Yeah. You know, I mean, like I'm rowing down a river, you know, anchoring up and catching steelhead. It's yeah. Like, yeah. I'm 25. I've never <laughs> rowed a drift boat. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, it was one of those, uh, I don't know. You just, I just kept going and going and going. And then, you know, growth wise, you just, you learn. I, I shared a story at the uh, edge rods pro shop. We had a seminar there with the ultimate shrimp gear. And one of the things that I, <clears throat> that I shared with that was, is, uh, you know, Clancy Holt, he, he used to fish Lewis river. Uh, that meat hole, I would say is one of the best labs that I've ever, that there ever could be. It's got the depth. It's near 50 feet. Oh, okay. Uh, fish stay, you know, that, you know, in that sort of depth and, and, and water, they don't spook easy. You know what I mean? When they're down there near bottom, yeah. um, uh, it's a great laboratory to test. And that's how a lot of these cures, you know, um, the cures that I've de designed and developed, that's how they were made, you yeah. know, was that's the home grounds. Yeah. So, yeah. You fish them there, you're going to do well there. Yeah. That's That was where they were designed. Yeah, that's awesome. So, that's awesome. So yeah. um, how did the how did the Ultimate Trim Gear, Ultimate Egg Gear, how did that kind of come to be? Sure. Because um, I know you, you said you did this once a handful of years ago or however mm -hmm. long ago, and right. then you kind of quit. Yeah. And now you're kind of back into it. So yeah. start, start with, start with the old stuff. Start with. Yeah. So in 2000, you know, gosh, back in the early 2000s, uh, you know, designed a, designed an egg cure, took it a different path. And, you know, I had, you know, I had Clancy Holt watching him in that meat hole. I kind of brought that up earlier and finishing on that. He, I, you know, just watched him time and time again, he would have eight people, uh, in his, or four people in his boat limited out with eight false Chinook. Mm -hmm. Uh, by 10 o'clock, he'd have a second group of people at the boat ramp, four more people. So he would have two limits in a day of yeah. eight fish, 16 fish. He was taken out of that hole. When a lot of us locals, we'd be lucky to catch one or two, right. You know, and here he is just destroying them. So it was like, okay, if somebody else can, I can too. Uh, that's when the experimenting began. So it's just test and test and test. And there was a lot of days I didn't catch anything, right? right? You, you're going through chemicals, you're going through scents, smells, this, that, all these sort of things, different concoctions, um, blends, formulas, and, you know, nothing comes of it, but then all of a sudden you start to see things come together and you start to see patterns and rhythms and things. And you just kind of keep really good notes, you know, over all the years, I've got a, my own Bible, I call it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, it's a, a plethora of, of information so detailed that, yeah. that over all those years, it's like, I began to really understand mm. how these fish think yeah. you know what i mean we should, like, we we should have brought the bible out here. well <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be nice skin? you know where it's at it's in my safe if you can get my safe you can have it yeah no kidding uh right next to some of my favorite guns it, <laughs> you know yeah uh, no i protect it with with my life and soul because it's it's 30 plus years of of work right uh, that that yeah someday when i pass that on that, that somebody writes a book on me or something there's more information <laughs> there's a lot more information that i've even brought out you know and there's you know some things i'll share again today mm -hmm. uh some things that people i haven't shared before for sure you yeah know? yeah that's awesome um so you, you you did this once before tell us a little bit kind of how yeah this new stuff came to be how did how did sure. you and pro gear was it steve or who was it that yeah, approached so, you or? yeah i run i run a car dealership in here in town allen webb chevrolet so mm -hmm. we're, we're at the dealership and and steve was in you know uh steve lynch pro gear he's, mm -hmm. the, he's the main man down there and uh we got to talking a little bit about fish and he said, you know, he goes, I've heard of you, you know, I've heard of a, you had an egg cure once. And I said, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was, and he goes, that was a really good egg cure I heard. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> I just didn't need it. Right. I didn't, it just got to that point where it was kind of like, I 
shelved it, put it away. Right. Yeah. It was, there was that selfishness in me, right? Because here I am given the world an opportunity at something that really is in my personal opinion, one of the best there is mm -hmm. right on the market. And I'm handing it out at a, you know, at the time we didn't sell, I didn't sell for much. And it was just, people were, they, they were very successful with it. And it wasn't that I, I really enjoyed seeing the successes, but then I fought myself with it because it's like, I'm almost shooting myself in my own foot, right? Because <laughs> right, I got right. people using my own bait, getting there before me. If they're doing good running the boat, they're catching the fish. Yeah. So I took it off the market. And when Steve brought, uh, you know, brought that conversation to the table, yeah, we came to an agreement. We partnered up, right? So they manufacture and distribute at Procure. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful guys to work with, amazing guys to work with. Um, yeah, love them to death. Yeah. They're yeah. really good at what they do. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, let's see here. What do we got next? So coon shrimp. Sure. You look at coon shrimp a certain way. Yeah. What is a coon shrimp to you? <clears throat> that's funny it uh you know hands down it's it's a scent sponge okay. you know what i mean i mean that those coon shrimp when we look at them uh once we get them cured up and stuff like that uh the chemicals and formula that i use they they technically uh infiltrate the shrimp right mm -hmm. and then allow the bait oils and bait scents and things like that that i add plus the stimulants the bite stimulants that are in the formula to penetrate the shrimp mm -hmm. and then from there uh it's all in the rigging right so it's how you rig the shrimp and where you present the shrimp and what species we fish the shrimp i think a lot of people get hung up with a monkey see monkey do world right mm -hmm. so i mean it isn't until recently here that the cats come out of the bag that the false chinook like you know coon shrimp right i mean it's inside 10 years here that they've been trolled out in the columbia river mm -hmm with some, some super, super successful results. Like everybody put, did a pro troll with a spinner. That was all they did. Yeah. Add a coon shrimp. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like it's I like, started doing that. I started doing that some this fall. And man, yeah. it's a game changer. It's a game changer. I mean, it's like, but here's the thing. It's not just fall Chinook. It's coho. It's summer steel. It, it's winter steel. It, it's spring Chinook. It's, it's sockeye. Mm -hmm. It's every species that swims up our river in the Columbia River. It's the most well-versed, most well-rounded bait that there is in the market. Now, if I would have looked back in time and talked to myself in 2006, seven, eight, and said that to myself, I tell you, hell no, yeah. salmon eggs are, right? The truth is, is it these coon shrimp, prawns, prawns are a little bit bigger version, obviously, mm. but the coon shrimp, they are it, yeah. you know? Maybe someday we'll see something else come out in the world of fishing that, that outdoes the coon shrimp, but in my personal opinion, it's the number one bait right now. Gotcha. Most gotcha. well rounded. What what do you think what do you think makes it the number one? Is it just the the versatility, the the difference in things you can do to it, or um what what sets it apart from yeah. everything else? That's a great question. Uh I do believe that that them being a scent sponge helps because if if you watch my youtube channel i have the ultimate shrimp cure youtube channel right mm -hmm. uh, i've aired out several recipes that i personally use exactly how i do it um whether it's a whether it's a drano recipe uh, an oregon city recipe a mouth of the wind recipe you know our tributaries down here a columbia river recipe mm -hmm. all these sort of things we start to d see that there's rhythms and patterns as to what each species likes right and i think that's kind of how it all plays out for yeah. me so yeah yeah certain certain you know fall fish might like certain scents springs might like certain scents they you do. know steelhead coho it's just they you do. Know, and you can slap all that versatility into one bait and yeah you know uh yeah you mess around a lot with it which you have yes yes and i've taught you know some of those youtube uh, videos that i've put out i've done it on the steelhead side side versions i've done it on the spring schnook versions and mm -hmm. then there's also fall schnook versions but here's something that's even funnier uh that's odd to me right is when i salmon egg fish for fall schnook i'm a scent junkie like mm -hmm. i'm consistently using tons of scents one thing i witnessed out here in the columbia with these fall schnook trolling these these coon shrimp behind pro trolls and whatnot or even triangle flashers uh the scents don't i mean they work but they it's like they're you, you don't need them near as much like mm -hmm. i consistently have gone out with just straight coon shrimp you know right out of the jar nothing added mm -hmm. and just wreck those fall chinook out there yeah. it's a mouth of lewis mouth the cow it's any of these cold water points that dump in 
Well, and that like, kind of comes back to the presentation side of things too. You know, sure. like it, it, it's definitely a scent sponge, but also the shrimp itself is an attractant, you yeah. know, cause you it get is. that, you get that gorgeous, vibrant color, yep. you know, and, and then size matters. Right. So yeah. I mean, it's like, we've got these larger shrimp, we've got mediums, we've got smalls, all these sort of things. And, you know, I've, I've kind of, I've kind of favored that, that, you know, pinky size shrimp, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's the smaller shrimp. Uh, I run a double two ox, two ox setup behind my pro trolls, uh, you know, tie them real close together. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just run one of those smaller shrimp and it's like, they just can't stand it. I mean, like they can't handle it. Like, yeah. They get up behind it and, uh, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I remember before you did that, um, before you did that seminar at the edge pro shop, you yep. had posted, and it might've been a couple weeks prior or something like that on your TikTok, a video of mm -hmm. a spinner yeah. with a shrimp. Oh yeah. Three, oh my God. Yeah. Didn't that look pretty? Oh dude, yeah. that was gorgeous. I know. It's like, we can tie these, we can tie these blade killers in and tie all these things into where our eyes mm -hmm. really, really like wow it. Right. But it, the weirdest part is, is over my years of blades and smileys and, and all these sort of things that we add on, or even maybe taking a blade on and putting a chunk of, 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 of you know, a filet up ahead of the coon shrimp. And I've shared that on one of my YouTube mm -hmm. videos, uh, that in itself, it, you know, it's just, there's so many different ways. I don't, I, people would ask me maybe what, what's your favorite blade? And I'll be <laughs> like, I really don't have the answer. Like, I mean, I like them all. Like yeah. I, I really, I mean, like it could be a blue, it could be a pink, it could be a yellow, it could be a green, it could be a, a gold, a silver. I mean, it's like, it just kind of seems like they're more tuned in on the bait than they are the blade. If that's, yeah. I guess is where I'm going with it. Right? Yeah. I'm, I've got the, I've got the same kind of philosophy, you know, yeah. I've got, I've got my, I got my colors that I kind of lean towards. And it's mm -hmm. funny. You had said we were on the phone earlier talking yeah. about what we're going to talk about here and you had sure. thrown out pinks. I yeah. love pinks. Yeah. Pinks are my favorite blades. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, I got a good buddy of mine, shout out Carson Grant, just painted me up a, uh, uh, a whole bunch of awesome looking blades and those he got me some, he got me some chartreuse, he got me some pinks and I'm going to run the fuck out of those pinks. Right. You know? No, they straight up are clean looking. Those are clean looking blades. Yeah. I, uh, I'm impressed. He yeah. did a good job. Yeah. He did awesome. He did awesome. So shout out to, shout out to Carson. Um, yeah, we, we you want to get in a little bit to some of the utilization of using these shrimp in the cold versus mm -hmm. warm water and yeah, no, that's a great question. I think a lot of the the monkey see monkey do world right now is is if it's forty eight degrees or warmer or fifty degrees or warmer, it depends on where you go talk, whether it's an Oregon guy or a Washington guy, you know, I mean everybody's got their little different opinion. Uh I got news for everybody. There is no temp concern. Okay. I've caught them from thirty five to seventy two. All right. I mean, all in between on coon shrimp, there is no, uh, I'm going to be honest with you, you know, Sunday, Monday, Easter. And I mean, I'm, we've done, we've booked 11 spring Chinook already. And yeah. Four of them came on coon shrimp, right? Yeah. Uh, 11 spring Chinook and it's April 3rd. I won't say where I was at, but the water's <laughs> cold there. It's very cold. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. The water's very cold. Yeah. Way colder than than these levels that everybody says you can ca only catch coon shrimp, you know, catch catch salmon on coon shrimp. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, these myths about water temp, they it's like they keep getting debunked every year, you know. Yeah. You got, you know, water temps about guys not wanting to use three sixties, you know, below a certain water temp. Look at Drano. Yeah. You know, I've seen I've been fishing Drano when the water temp is forty three degrees, you mm -hmm. know, pretty darn cold. Mm -hmm. And what are you trolling? You're trolling three sixties and you know, coon shrimp. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we're fishing even a little bit colder water than that this last couple of days that we were out and, mm -hmm. uh, they don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care. They're hungry feeders. Okay. Spring Chinook are some of the best biters that there are in my personal opinion. They just, they're ravenous and they're, they're, they're aggressive. If you can get into them where they're not spooked, give them a solid, clean, perfect presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people, they get behind me and ask me, you know, like Keith, it's consistent what you do. It's just insane. And it's like, yeah, I have bait that rocks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's legit, but I can run a boat. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a huge, huge factor. And, you know, some of these techniques and styles that we use, uh, it makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference. I get in somebody else's boat at times and it's like, I just, I can't fish with other people. <laughs> yeah. I don't mean it in a disrespectful way, but it's like, I can feel the boat doing things that it shouldn't be doing because if the baits are doing this sort of stuff, 
fish don't like this sort of stuff. They like it in your face, straight mm -hmm. at you, right? If you're trolling, you're trolling upstream. If you're, you know, it's like, yeah, you can make turns and things like that. And we're out in the Columbia or the Willamette, and you, a lot of times you catch fish on turns. The inside rod slows down, you know, that blade flutters a little slower, and all of a sudden mm -hmm. that fish is sitting there right behind it, and he goes, "Oh yeah, now." Yeah, Crunch. yeah. I'm a big i I mess with throttle speed a lot more than it's I mess really with. Really important. You know, I'll I'll kick it up a little bit, and then I'll kick it, cut it down, and yeah. try to let that gear fall. And, yeah, I spend a lot of time over, you know, at the mouth of the the, the the slough that's one of my favorite fisheries here in another week and a half two weeks and i'll stay there and you know i'll, I'll spend my time in that section a lot of guys are up fishing the flats i'll, I'll sit down there in that deep water mm -hmm. i'll run triangles i'll run pro trolls uh coon shrimp mm -hmm. okay uh speed it up yeah a lot of people get to go too slow they like you just let that rod just whoa, whoa, whoa. get that rod pumping on those pro trolls and it will shock you yeah, especially when that water temp starts to climb above 50, mm -hmm. how much faster those spring Chinook will want it. Yeah. Okay? And then I'm not saying you're, you're, you're creating a wake behind you. It's nothing like that. Right. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying you're pushing, you know, GPS speeds, high ones, low twos, you know, mm -hmm. um, that's GPS speed, right? Not, right. not necessarily concluding, you know, basically, yeah. In regards to how you're going in the water. But anyway, it, it it's just, Time and time again, I see some big names over there trolling around, you know, top guides, really good guides. And, uh, you know, they, they catch their fish too, but, um, yeah, these, these, these coon shrimp, it's just, I can't say enough about them. Yeah. You know, I yeah. can't say enough about them. They really are. They really are next level. Yeah. Yeah. So that's killer, man. Um, so I know you've gone over, you've gone over in some of your YouTube videos and you went over it in the seminar, mm -hmm. um, just kind of a nice basic cure do you want to get into do you want to yeah. get into doing that real quick yeah so i mixed up some some juice pre pre-show here uh i didn't want to do this in the house so one of the things with these these cures and formulas is the the powder itself is extremely extremely fine so when you take how fine that stuff is if you open that lid in here uh even move that jar around those fine particles are going to get out okay yeah, if i made that mistake <laughs> yeah if you're married in in you or you got a nice house man just do it outside because if you put it if you, it gets in the carpet it gets on countertops it gets on i mean look at my table from some of my videos from back <laughs> in the day i mean you can still see where i've spilled a little bit and i've magic eraser and yeah this table shot yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah anyway uh long story short yeah it's it's really important do it outside so i mix my chemicals seven ounces of of, of cure it's a 14 ounce bottle so mm -hmm. basically half a bottle uh, there is a silica packet in there. Make sure you pull the silica packet out but before you put the cure in, okay, to the jar, shake the cure up, hold your hand on top of the jar, right? Give it a good shake, mix it up because your, your chemicals in there, multiple different chemicals and dyes, they will settle. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I want those chemicals and dyes mixed back up right. before you mix them in to the, uh, to the jar. So I'll add seven ounces of the cure in here. Okay. And then I'll put two and a half cups of water in. And then when I do that, I've got this solution and you can see here, and I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's, there's still formula that needs to dissolve. Okay. Mm -hmm. One of the ways you can expedite dissolving is heating your water. Okay. All right. So if you're in a crunch, you're in a pickle and you want to get these things cured up quickly, heat that water to a simmer. Okay. Gotcha. And then put, you know, pour that into your chemicals and then it'll dissolve significantly quicker. I'm even of the belief that, that, Honestly, you know, if you want super firm shrimp, like really, I wouldn't say that my cure will ever make them crispy, mm -hmm. uh, but really, really firm shrimp, heat that water up a little bit, get it to a slight simmer and then add that, get your shrimp in and have them thawed before you, Oh, really? before you do it. Yeah. Cause that's going to toughen them up just a little bit more. Actually heat is a good thing in okay. that situation. Yeah. It actually, these are all pre-cooked, right? Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. so they're all cooked shrimp, but yeah, that'll, that'll actually kind of help keep them tight gotcha. Um, but gotcha. we have chemicals in there that do that uh, there are some there are some prawn cures and shrimp cures out there that, that definitely crispy them up a little more mm. um, they're using some chemicals that i'm just i'm aware of what they are right i mean i've tested them all over the years i i'm not gonna they're, they're just a hot or not type chemical when i say hot or not not like is in the world that we talk in car in, or in fishing where people are like hey it's a hot cure it's a cold cure not that i'm saying hot as in they bite it or they don't bite yeah, it. you know yeah. what i mean it's like, either it's on, like or, it's on off. or off okay that's the best way to put it and on or off to me is like i don't want that okay yeah. i want consistency consistency i want it going all the time I want to have the high days, right? I want to be in there on those big, big days, you know, and mm -hmm. producing the big numbers. Uh, but yeah, that that that's one thing to be concerned with. So yeah. heat it up a little bit, 
you know, mix your solution, dissolve it. You'll see, you, you know, we've got a little bit left to dissolve there, but so seven ounces of cure, two and a half cups of water. I'm going to throw my coon shrimp in and I'll just kind of funnel them in here carefully so I don't spill them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for any of our, for any of our Spotify or Apple listeners or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you can obviously go watch this episode on YouTube, but also go check out Keith's YouTube. He's done this. He's done this all before. This isn't anything nobody's seen. So yeah, that's um, the ultimate shrimp cure YouTube page. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. So yeah, if you're, if you're listening on Apple or, or Spotify, go, go check out his YouTube page and, and uh, you'll be able to see all this. You see that one? Yeah, it's a good one. And that's a pretty one. Okay, a little big for my liking, but one thing that everybody gets excited about, I get most excited about, is look at them whiskers. Yeah. Okay, whiskers are key. Uh, I've sat and watched and tested time and time again. The shrimp with whiskers catch more fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, that simple. So when you're putting them in, try to be careful with them and try not to break the whiskers. Be, be delicate. Uh, you know, when it comes to the later in the process of the curing you know when you're shaking them and stuff like that or moving them around mm -hmm. uh to, to to get them to take the solution mm -hmm. don't shake the hell out of them yeah because you're just breaking things up and softening your shrimp yeah okay so we're getting there we're getting there. Isn't that funny i'm getting good at measuring these things <laughs> right now yeah you know? so so obviously for for video's sake these are all still frozen yeah it, when you're curing for for fishing do you usually thaw them out and kind of sort them or I, do you just you usually just do it just like this. So I will sort. Okay. I don't usually thaw. And they sometimes will thaw if I'm getting really anal about sorting, right? Yeah. If I'm taking a whole bunch and doing like 10 pounds at a time, yeah, some will be thawed. But no, I'm not worried about whether they're thawed or not thawed in this carrying process because these usually go in and I don't fish them for two weeks. Okay. Now I will add my scents. Okay. Let me back up a second. So we got these, we got the shrimp in here, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, again, these go in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I put them in the fridge tomorrow morning. I wake up, I'll go out and I'll flip it over and I want to check that, that, that solution and make sure uh, that it's dissolved. Right. So by 12, 24 hours, I should see most all those chemicals dissolving. All mm -hmm. right. So I'm just, now I'm at a 12 hour mark. I'm going to flip them every 12 hours in the morning, 12 hours at night. When I come home from work, I'll flip them over and just kind of do the same. I'll add my sense. How, real quick. How, how long will you continue that flipping process? Will you do it for two weeks? Will you do it for three days? How, how long? So what I'll do is, is if I intend to keep these shrimp and fish them in a month or two or five or, you know, or whatever it may be, mm. I'm going to add rock salt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause I want to make sure that my salinity, salinity level is at 100%. Okay. Uh, the formula that I've designed should keep you right there close. Okay. That being said, safety precautions and more important when you add rock salt which i have here i'll go ahead and throw some in here as we're chatting uh rock salt is a is a uh easy thing to see mm -hmm. in in the jar yeah, right and yeah. you can see it's a good oh, indicator of yeah and i'm just going to grab a couple of handfuls mm -hmm. and drop them in now you can see why we did two and a half cups of water right yeah see what's happening here yeah i filled it with coon shrimp Two and a half cups of water, and look where we're at. I don't yeah. know if you can see that with the video, but we're right there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's that's a full jar. All right. Set that aside. Sorry about that noise. <laughs> uh, we'll put that lid on nice and tight. Mm -hmm. Most importantly, nice and tight before you get to rolling them around. And then we'll just kind of work those work that rock salt down to the bottom. Now you can, you probably can't see it with the camera, but you can visibly see the rock salt. Yeah. Yeah. That's and your, you're kind of gently kind of rolling them yeah, around. You're not all, shaking them. I'm not them. shaking them. You know, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of rolling. I just want those powders to move around a little bit. They're, they just need to dissolve a little further. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's ultimately what I want to do. Okay. Um, 72 hours, you can start fishing these. Okay. okay. So yeah. 72 hours, they're ready to fish. Uh, at the 72 hour mark, usually about when I start adding my scents and stuff like that. And, and, you know, uh, tonight we could throw a few scents in if we wanted to, but, um, more importantly, I think just, you know, back to them YouTube videos and stuff like that. If you really want to see a great version for Drano or a great version for Oregon city, wind river, those sort of things, these competitive fisheries that we have out there, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, you don't have to add scent to these to catch fish. I mean, they, they will catch fish and flat catch fish on their own. It's just, I think when you get into these competitive fisheries, you want to find a way to, def to define yourself and be mm -hmm. a little bit different. Yeah. So what people want to do is they want to do the monkey see monkey do. Hey, Keith Archer says, go put anchovy, uh, <laughs> smelly jelly, or, or I'm sorry, procure squid and, and, uh, shrimp prawn and those sort of things in there. And 
that's the formula, right? That's the recipe. Well, yeah. what happens if 50 people in Drano are fishing that exact recipe? Yeah. A couple guys are going to do pretty well. Yeah. But most everybody's going to be like everybody else. So yeah. it's like, it's fun to share, right? But at the same time, be yourself, mm -hmm. okay? And, and explore the world of scents. There's a zillion of them out there. Procure makes some amazing, amazing products. I, I, I've yet to find a smell on the shelf that doesn't catch, right? right? Uh, there are ones that certainly catch better, and I've aired those out. I love Procure Squid. I love Procure Shrimp Prawn. I love Procure Garlic Plus. I mean, it's like Procure Anise. The I've got it sitting over there. It was, you know, in the in the brown bottle. It's it's it'll crystallize when it sits in the fridge. I keep all my scents in the refrigerator. So mm -hmm. I have a my own refrigerator out in the garage. So yeah, yeah. But that's you ever what I do. you ever toy around with the with the Northwest bait and scent stuff or you uh, just... Shane stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, I really haven't spent a lot of time fishing it myself. Yeah. Um, I started. Uh, I started a bit last year yeah. and uh I, I love it i like yeah. it yeah I, I, obviously i have plenty of procure i love procure yeah. it's more tools in your belt so yeah you know? no you're right with that and matter of fact a, a good friend of mine chuck he used to run the trump 2020 boat he's probably the easiest to be remembered by that boat <laughs> uh i love that boat yeah uh anyway he's a he uses a lot of, of shane's product there at, you know northwest or it's uh what is it called uh zilla bait zilla bait yep. yeah yeah and uh, the scent though the scent stuff yeah yeah northwest bait and scent bait and scent yeah yep. that stuff and anyway he, i see it in his boat and he's done really well with it you mm -hmm. know so obviously he's got a good product there yeah for yeah sure. yeah shane obviously does awesome with it too but. yeah I would, yeah I've, I've seen him post a couple pictures of spring chinook already this year yeah. he's good for him absolutely yeah. yeah absolutely so you're not only using the uh shrimp cure for shrimp mm -mm. you've also got something else sitting over there yeah i was going to share something with everybody uh you know one and of th this is why we brought keith on today is because <laughs> he, he's got a he's got a wealth of knowledge and uh and we're breaking the can wide open today <laughs> yeah why not right why yeah. not uh one of the things i wanted to share a little bit is i had another another jar here mixed up okay um everybody likes to fish herring off the tray they like to fish herring blue mm -hmm. and they like to fish them chartreuse right yeah. But when we go through those spinner blades that we were talking about earlier, what are some of the colors that salmon really key on? They, key, in my opinion, they key on chartreuse, blue, orange, pink. Yeah, they kind of key, key on them all, right? Right. So again, if there's a ton of people out there fishing silver herring, and then they've already seen a lot of silver herring, right? Yeah. If there's a ton of people out there fishing chartreuse herring. They've already kind of seen chartreuse herring or blue herring. So what I've done is with significant amount of successes is I'll take about two to three ounces of ultimate shrimp cure, and you can use either one, high octane or regular, okay? Mm -hmm. Both are great, 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 you know, for, for spring chinook. Uh, put it in my jar, pre-mix it outside, same sort of thing with the shrimp cures. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll have my herring, and I'll put them in whole, right? Mm -hmm. And I just set them in, and as you can see here, Okay. Oh yeah, that's instantly taken it, isn't it? Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. So what we're doing is, is we're giving these herring the opportunity to take the dye, but more mm. importantly, the bite stimulants. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, because I've toyed, I've toyed with pro cures, their mm -hmm. their magenta pink, just mm -hmm. the, the the badass bait dye. Yeah. But I mean, th this is essentially that with yeah with the bite stimulants and stuff. Yep. So. Yep. Yep. And what you're gonna find is is two and a half cups of water mixed in with three three you know right around three. Uh, ounces of powder uh and a dozen herring in here mm -hmm. is going to be right about the full line gotcha. you know what i mean so yeah. that's right about where you're at so i'm at six herring there and and uh but yeah i mean take a look at that I yeah don't know if we can see it on cam already but you should be able to yeah. yeah i mean it's a gorgeous looking pink very vibrant pink that it's just a wicked flash and then more importantly like it, you know I'm, I'm a super big fan of fishing herring off the tray i think it's a, a very very effective way mm -hmm. but so these fish you know you got the columbia river right now or you go in the willamette or the channel right now there is a lot of herring in the river mm. people are fishing a lot of herring right yeah which i still to this day like okay here's my herring thing but if you catch me out there fishing right now you know what i'm doing i'm not trolling herring right i mean i am utilizing uh coon shrimp mm -hmm. prawns uh on anchor yeah right and and you know, I want to give a shout out to, to, you know, Brecken, Brecken, you know, he approached me here a couple of weeks back and maybe it was three weeks ago. And he says, Hey, can I, can I use your ultimate shrimp cure to, to put together a, you know, shrimp and sell them on the market, Yeah, you know, cure them up. And I thought, 
yeah, why not? Right. right. I mean, most importantly, I just want to be involved in a little bit. I don't want nothing from it. Right. Right. I just want to be involved in a little bit because you're, you know, my name's on it. Mm-hmm. Right. So I just want to give you the recipe. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. So one of my other recipes out there is on the market. Yeah. Okay. So he's actually, you know, uh, doing the, a lot of dirty work, yeah. uh, sorting coon shrimp and being really particular about what he's doing, uh, doing a phenomenal job as far as curing them up. He's got them looking good. They're, I mean, most vibrant looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And I've, I've watched guys catch them. I already have reports, people catching fish on them. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Pretty sweet. Back to that herring. Yeah. Um, so will you just, will you just let them sit just like that? Or will you add any kind of salt to that? Yeah. Or? I, can, I will add a little bit of rock salt tonight. If I was fishing these tomorrow, I just put one handful in, okay. you know, very small handful rock salt goes a long ways. And again, there's, there's, there's salts and things. Yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. And that's why I was, and, that's why I was asking you. Yeah. No, just a, just a nice little handful. Um, yeah, and you'd be set. Yeah. Now, do you ever do you ever add sense to your herring, or do you just kind of? <laughs> How much do you want, man? <laughs> I want that. I want the Bible to sit. <laughs> uh, so yes, I do. Uh, not early on as much. Okay. Uh, it seems like what we're going to have here very soon is we've you know we just talked about dam counts, right? So uh, we have 105 fish over Bonneville. We've got fish starting to stage. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what I mean by that is the Columbia River, these fish will come in, they'll start to stage around the tidal area. Okay. Where is that right now? Well, the Columbia River at Vancouver is around four feet. Mm-hmm. So that puts the tidewater influence about the 205 bridge. Okay. Okay. So if I'm fishing, I'm fishing in those areas where these fish are starting to stage. Okay. Staged fish bite better than traveling fish okay okay i want people to understand that yeah. that's when, interesting yeah when you go out and you're fishing on these fish when that tide gets to rolling out here have you ever noticed that the fish bite on the change of the tide yeah okay? yeah everybody's like high slack low slack you want to be there high slack little slack or the hour before two hours before two hours after and it's like you got this little window of time when the tide's ripping yeah it's harder to catch fish then mm-hmm. okay i'm not saying you can't Right. But it's super hard when you're trolling a herring because you're going downstream at 2.5, 3.0, 3.5, depending on the height of the Columbia, 4.0. Well, and, really and, how, and how far down river you are, those tides get bigger down there. Yeah. And, and they pull harder and harder and harder. Right. Yeah. I sit on anchor. Okay. Right? Yeah. Or, okay. Or let's say that the Columbia River, which is typically would be, they're going to flush smolt here real soon. So they're going to raise the Columbia. I don't know if you've been paying attention, but the Snake River's backed up. Everything's backed up. They got a ton of water they're holding back and they're getting ready to flush smolt. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's right around the timeline that we all get excited about when our biggest return of salmon returns. And like <laughs> all of a sudden here they go, they flush us out. All of us herring trollers, yeah. the guys that are out there trolling herring all of a sudden have high water to contend with. So what do I do in that situation? Yeah. Uh, find, my, find the travel lanes and sit on anchor, uh, that, or I get my jumbo jet divers out. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I flip the boat around backwards and I back troll. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I'll go out to bachelor and, and Eric Brigham and I, okay. Uh, uh, superstar fisherman himself. Okay. God, this goes back what? 12, 15 years. I wish Eric was sitting here with us. He could probably <laughs> help remember I'm losing my memory at this age, <laughs> but <clears throat> we had a year where that water, it had come up and I want to say it was like 12 feet in Vancouver. All the herring guys, they weren't catching nothing. Yeah. I mean, they were trolling their hearts out, but good luck. Like one fish on herring for all the bachelor, and there'd be 40 boats. And then the anchor guys, you know, you'd see there was 20 fish for 50 boats type thing. And then there was Eric and I that both of us, each of our boats were in double digits. Yeah. Okay. Back trolling coon shrimp on a diver, prawns on a diver, or a cut plug behind a diver. Mm-hmm. Okay. So how I rigged that was is, I ran a 50 foot jet diver on about an 18 inch dropper when I was running the herring mm-hmm. or the, or the prawn or the cut, the, 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 the coon shrimp run about a five and a half foot leader. Mm-hmm. Okay. You want to get that. They want to get that herring away from that jet diver. And then, uh, I ran a small spin glow medium, so like, like size four, size yeah. six spin glow mid leader. Okay. Just to help kind of keep that a little herring. bit of flotation. Yeah. And I don't want it right at the bait, uh, at the herring or at the, uh, the prawn or the coon shrimp. I just want it mid leader to kind of help float it up. Dude, we wrecked them yeah. between Eric and I. And it was so funny because we were we would back troll between the boats in yeah. the anchor hog lines. And they're looking at us like, what are you doing? And it's like, oh, fish on, oh, fish on, oh, fish on. We were just letting them go the one day in my boat. I mean, it was like for multiple days in a row. We were just You're letting springers go? 
Yeah. Oh man, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, just let it go. I mean, just catch and release them. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's like, why not? Right. Go out and have fun, figure out what they want and catch a bunch yeah, and, yeah. And, and tune it in and make sure you got it figured out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, we do a lot of that. We do a lot of catch <laughs> release. I mean, it, it, you get, you get to that level and I don't mean to toot my own horn. I'm trying, you know, it, this whole experience has been so humbling, but it's like, you know, in my youth, it was, I fished daylight till dark, right. you know? So, I mean, if I caught 20 in a day, I caught 20 in a day. That's what happened. And yeah. I just catch, I catch, you know, and, and wait till I got a big one and, and then keep catching and let them go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of times in my youth in the meat hole, people look at me like, what are you doing? You're letting <laughs> fish go. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, I mean, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's get into a little bit. I think we kind of walked over this, um, with the coon shrimp. Sure. Did we already talk freshness? Uh, I don't know that we did, but I think that's a very important subject to discuss. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, we're at the mercy of a couple netters that are up in the Anacortes area where the coon shrimp come in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these, these coon shrimp are, they're, they're, there isn't a whole lot of fisheries for them, right? They go out and they, I don't, who knows how many pounds they catch, but they bring them in, they cook them, they do their thing. Uh, if they don't do it quite right, we're all in trouble, yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, if they don't preserve, you know, bring them in fresh, get them cooked quick and, and box pro frozen fast and box properly, we're kind of all in trouble. And there's been some years in the past, you know, we've been fishing coon shrimp myself for a lot of years. Uh, but there were some years where it's like, no matter what you did with the cure, it like, they were just soft and yeah. you couldn't do anything. And it was more the fault of the, those that, that boxed them and got them ready. But, um, so yeah, they usually net them in June. So you'll get an opportunity in June to get the freshest of the fresh. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's a sad thing because spring Chinook, we fish in March, April, May, you yeah. know, <laughs> and into June a little bit now in some of these fisheries. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're having to fish year old shrimp. Yeah. Right. So yeah. that's why a lot of times in June, I'll go get my shrimp. I'll cure up my shrimp, make sure I got a lot of extra rock salt in there. And I mean, visible extra, I'll put a cup and a half and it don't matter. Yeah. I and mean, it's just, yeah. it's just going to sit there. And then I'll kind of roll those shrimp once every month or whatever, just to kind of keep the water moving in there, uh, and keep them firm. Mm. And those are my super, super ultra fresh shrimp that are cured and preserved. Cause I mean, technically speaking, right. You get something to hundred percent salinity, it's going to stay 100% fresh. Right. I mean, that's really what it is. Okay. That's, that's what that's all about. Um, yeah. So you're carrying, you're carrying them and getting them done. And I have lots of, I mean, if we didn't look in my fridge, I didn't ask you to open it, but you'll see there's tons of coon shrimp in there that have been, you know, cured up and I have all sorts of different recipes in certain areas. I go take those and, and expect different results. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Um, another question that I had had, and I asked you this previously once before, I'm going to ask you again for podcast sake, mm -hmm. um, sugar in, in your cure. Yeah. Um, a lot of, a lot of cure videos that you'll see on YouTube or, mm -hmm. um, like a lot of those guys use a lot of sugar in their cure. They do. And I mean, in, in like the cure process, mm -hmm. um, why is it necessarily you're adding just rock salt, not sh sugar into this, like into like this jar right here? That's a good question. Uh, lots of different sugars out there in the market, right? You mm -hmm. have standardized sugars, you have artificial sugars, you have a lot of different things. Um, uh, corn, uh, not corn, but uh, uh, cane sugar, okay? Uh, that's the common one that everybody uses. I'm not even a big fan of cane sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm not even, I don't even really see it to be that much of a factor in 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 the successes, whether it's a egg cure or shrimp cure, those sort of things. There are some other sugars out there on the market. I'm not going to air out exactly what I do, mm -hmm. but, uh, they're more effective. Yeah. Significantly more effective. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, if you want to add sugars, you certainly can. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had that question come up a handful of times. I think you had asked me once and yeah. then a few other people have, have, have sent messages or, or emails in and I want to add more sugar. And it's like, I think they're seeing some of these other videos out there and I'm not going to shy you away from it. I'm not going to say it doesn't work. I'm going to tell you that I've made this formula mm -hmm. to where I believe it the most effective it could be. Yeah. I've worked on it for a lot of years, right? I mean, this is, this is tweaked and tuned and tweaked and tuned. And one of the things I didn't share was, is in, in the early two thousands, I mean, you have to remember I was a fishing guide. Yeah. I did that on the part-time for fun. But then there was a couple of years that I actually took a sabbatical from the auto industry and went and guided full time. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why I did that was to experiment, yeah. to be honest with you. I mean, the car industry paid me way more money than, <laughs> than, than fishing guide. Yeah. Right. And it was, I just needed a break from that, but I also wanted to learn more. And right. that was the era that I was really, you know, testing, testing, testing. So I would bring 
four or five guys out on a trip and they were my test dummies. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful <laughs> way, but they were sitting in my boat in that laboratory we spoke about earlier, uh, dropping baits down there that I was testing with. Right. So that's kind of how I arrived at where I arrived with, with these cures and that got me to the, 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 got them to the level that they are for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you can, what you've already done, yeah, you've gotten this cure to a point to where it's like you said, you're, you're as confident with this mm -hmm. as you can be. Yeah. You get your consistency here. Cause mm -hmm. we had talked about hot and not. Yeah. If you get to where this is consistent, you can do your, you can do your messing around with the scent side of stuff. Correct. So yeah, yeah. it's, you know, uh, I got a phone call today from, from Jason Hamley. He's one of the other, he's the lead manager there, the head guy, you know, at, at pro cure, uh, you know, he was just going over the successes of the, of the cure and what had happened. And, and, you know, in first quarter of 24, there was over 2,500 bottles of cure that sold. I mean, that's, that's crazy. To me. <laughs> like it's so humbling in its own way because it's, it's, they're not buying it because of my name. They're not buying it because Procure is bottling. They're buying it because of the word of mouth and the successes that are happening behind the scenes. See, fishing is a funny thing because nobody wants to talk about their success, right? Yeah. Nobody wants to share how they got to where they got to or why they caught what they caught. Yeah. They want to keep it to themselves so that they can go catch more on their own. Yeah. They just well, want to post pictures. <laughs> right. Yeah. So they might post a picture, but they don't say, hey, ultimate shrimp cure is what caught these fish. Well, I'm here to tell you, mm -hmm. my phone's loaded with text messages and, and direct DMs and Facebook and Instagram and all these places of all these success pics. And it's it's just so humbling to me because it's like these guys are just wrecking steelhead plunking down in the lower Columbia. I mean, I'm talking unbelievable. The Cowlitz River, the you know, Lower Lewis, the, you know, all these rivers. And guys are it's humbling. Yeah. It's so humbling how many fish are being caught. I knew it was good. Okay. I knew it was a good cure. Yeah. I, I, it's just, it's amazing. Like it's just, it's awesome. Yeah. That's, that's part of the reason that, I mean, pretty much from day one of starting this podcast, mm -hmm. I started this, I think, shit, I think our first episode was January 1st. Right. That's, you know, right about the time that that's when this came out. That's when this came out. Yeah. The know? ultimate shrimp cure came out the first week of January. Yeah. It's, it's new. I mean, the ultimate egg cure came out last, uh, I think it was last of October and that first two, the last two months. Okay. Egg season's about done. There's a little bit of winter steelhead eggs you can cure. Mm -hmm. There was like a thousand fifty bottles of ultimate egg cure that sold. And it was just like, what? <laughs> what? I mean, guys, there's not even that many eggs to cure yet. Like, yeah. We're not even in fall season. I mean, when we, when we come into the fall time this year, late summer, fall, I don't even know what's, you know, where we're going to be. I mean, it's wow. Yeah. That's all I can say is wow. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, the only thing I will say is, is, is if people are listening and paying attention, mm -hmm. you know, the, the one thing that's a limited supply, we can make as much egg cure. Procure can make me as much egg cure and shrimp cure as we need made. Right. Yeah. If, there, if there's 20,000 bottles to sell, they're going to make it and sell it. Yeah. There's endless supplies of, of materials. There's not an endless supply of coon shrimp. Right. Right. So if you don't have it, go get them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, like go get your coon shrimp and where do you get them? Well, I mean, it's, it's, I'm getting that question a ton, like behind the scenes, I get it asked all the time. You know, there's some, there's some guys in town here, uh, edge pro shops, you know, anglers West, those guys that are local boys where we all grew up. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would solicit them and source them first, but I mean, fishermen's marine supply, D and G, um, you know, Bob's and Longview. A lot of these guys, there's some guys out East, um, that have definitely stepped up their game that are, that are now stocking coon shrimp. Mm -hmm. Uh, heck there's a hometown ACE hardware in Yakima. Okay. They're, they're repping my product hard and there's a ton of people. And they had, they sent me a picture of a bait fridge freezer, uh, just full of coon shrimp. It yeah. was amazing. I was like, good man. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah. So. I was lucky. I was lucky. I got myself, I got myself 10 pounds here a couple couple months ago and for for me and you yeah. know being a weekend we're 10 pounds will last me all year sure you know? yeah no doubt like and you know for me I, I i'll go through 30 40 pounds but i give a lot of it away i mean i'll get you know people come up to me at the at the river or whatever and be like you know you had i watched you today that was amazing you caught a bunch of fish and it's like here here's some bait and they're looking at me like what <laughs> and it's like yeah just you know go have fun man yeah enjoy yourself yeah yeah you yeah know, that's, that's kind of you know i bought that i bought that 10 pounds i knew i wasn't going to burn through all of it so right. um I, I started giving it away to some of my buddies too. And I'm like, Hey man, like I'm, I'm trying this stuff out. Mm -hmm. I only fish so often. 
Mm -hmm. help me try it out, you know? And, uh, you know, the, the more baits that, the more baits you can put in the water, the, uh, uh, the more, I guess, the better idea you get of how, how, how you're doing, you know? Correct. Um, but yeah, with some of mine, some of mine, so I did, what did I do? I want to say I did eight jars. I did eight jars of this stuff and thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but I, I added, I added sugar to some of it just as experimental. I'm trying, you yeah, know, for sure. and, uh, and I'm excited to see how it fares. And I, I've done, I think I did six of them exactly to your recipe. And, mm-hmm. um, I, I'm excited to see how it goes. Another thing that I'm going to mess with is I cured, I cured eight jars well before I was going to be fishing them. Yeah. I'm going to cure, you know, a handful, As two weeks, you know, yeah. because you like, you said you usually cure yours two weeks or so before you start using I them. I do. I do. I have mine in the fridge that I have my, you know, I'll have them stockpiled. I have them cured and ready. And yeah. some of those I'm giving away and, and working with people. And, and, you know, there's some guides in the area that, that they were even testing for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the last three, four years here, they were even, you know, I was doing all their bait and just using them to test. It was awesome, man. They were great, great help. And, and kind of concluded the, the final formulas that was more importantly, the high octane formula. That was the second formula and last formula that I've had. I have others. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, we'll see what we do. I yeah. don't know if, if Steve comes to me and says, let's do more. And then I, I got more, yeah. you know, I yeah. got more, uh, yeah. The scent side of things what I'm working on next. Yeah. 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 So you got I'll, that, you got that. look at that, but you got that orange juice sitting over there. Yeah. So there's something, yeah, we'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> we'll talk about that a little later, but, uh, you know, I brought some eggs out. They don't, you know, we, I'll pull them out here real quick. I was fishing these on Sunday, mm. uh, a couple of baits that were left over. You can smell them. Yeah. Take a whiff there. Oh, yeah, that's nice. But, you know, one thing, you look at these eggs, okay? See how tacky they are? Yeah. I mean, there's no there's no juice now. There's nothing like that. These are eggs that were, oops, they're just staying my table again. <laughs> but those are eggs that, yeah, we could go up and drop those in and, probably catch fish tomorrow yeah i want to but i gotta work dang it (laughs) so Uh, but the keller the ultimate the ultimate egg care itself it's one of the most vibrant egg that you can buy on the market yeah it's literally the brightest 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 eggs and then the last would be uh these are steelhead candy okay Mm -hmm. i did these up and i put a date on it let's see 112 Mm -hmm. of 24 so these are three months old Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah You can take a whip. Is that one that you did a video on? I think I did. Yeah. Yeah. I think I did a video. But yeah, when you really look inside there, uh, I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And these are these are one of my favorite baits for steelhead. Yeah. Um side drifting them out of the boat, bobber fishing them, tipping jigs. Um I even did I even did some of those. Um I was on I was on one of our lower rivers and uh anchored mm-hmm. with divers and bait you did uh, yeah I, I even did that instead of instead of coon shrimp you did know you just messing uh, no okay. but, but you but tried it i tried it i yeah. tried it but also i didn't catch fish on anything that day yeah. so it's not i'm not saying that that's no it, again that's that's a different technique i've never tried that that'd be interesting to see it yeah. work in it i think I, it's I loved, certainly good. It, it looked good it looked good they, they're bright yeah, They're really, really bright. And when you drift them, uh, you know, drift fishing, bobber fishing, side drifting from the boat, uh, heck, even using them sometimes on spring chinook tipping eggs, you know, it's yeah. like, you just don't know. I mean, like they, all these baits are so well-rounded and so well-versed, you can use them in all different fashions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can, you, you even use the, use the cure for, for corn, for kokanee. Yeah. I think I brought that out. Heck, yeah. I these up. Yeah. So you kokanee fishermen, you check yeah. this stuff out. Yeah. I, I brought this out. I think I cured these in January ish. Uh, you know, so most guys cure their bait and they throw them away. But if you look at those, those are yeah. super vibrant. That's done with the ultimate shrimp cure. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they still smell as fresh as the day I made them. Yeah. I mean, super yeah. sweet. You smell how sweet those smell. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Uh, what is that? That's basically a, that's your shoe peg corn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, one of my favorites for kokanee. And then I think it's like a teaspoon of in this particular size. I mean, if I was going to make a little more like a quart jar or whatever, a pint jar, then I'd, I'd add more. But in this particular size, about a teaspoon and a half of powder. And then I put some tuna oil from the can in here. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think there's some squid oil, procure squid oil in there and that behind, uh, 
up there on Lake Merwin. Mm-hmm. Those are deadly. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah. deadly. They look deadly. Yeah. One thing I'll throw in as a tip at Lake Merwin, uh, one thing I've witnessed over time is I've, I've recognized how those fish, you know, people use Dodgers, Flashers, this, that. You know, I just use Alvins. I don't, you know, I mean, that's all I use is an Alvin as a wobbler, right? Yeah. Uh, the Alvin that's silver, not chrome, not brass, right? not gold, silver. Yeah. Those wreck kokanee. Yeah. You put the other colors out in the same boat at the same time, it's like they'll catch a fish here, but the silver will just be bang, bang, bang. So, I mean, just a tip for everybody, if you're going up there fishing, run a true silver. Yeah wobbler or flasher and see if that changes your game for you i it does mine was that what that was you that was telling me was it your your daughter or something like that she picked it out yeah yeah Yeah. she (laughs) actually put that whole thing together and i should have brought it in here because i could have showed everybody but it's tied up on her rod out there yeah uh yeah she we had a day where it was like i'm gonna get the kids into fishing so we're gonna do the whole tape show and Mm -hmm. i got all brand new wobblers out and alvin's out and you know i had all the the stencil tapes and the the glitter tapes and reflective tapes and you know all the ones you see like on these and prism tapes and stuff yeah yeah and uh yeah they were clipping away and doing patterns and they she picked purple black like a purple metallic a black uh and then that silver and that's what it was and she had speckled the purple and black on it and yeah it's just it's hands down like it's the best wobbler in the boat and i've sat there and studied its wobble mm-hmm. and it's not that it's yeah. the color yeah. i mean it literally is the color so kudos to her <laughs> kudos yeah. to maddie for, yeah. for putting that together yeah that's my wife's name is it yeah. yeah yeah maddie that's uh that's her on the wall there i don't know if you can see it in the video but that's yeah. her summer steelhead there this last year we were just we went down swimming she doesn't really like fishing she likes swimming so when we're swimming oh. i throw a rod <laughs> out real quick and if we can catch one in 20, 30 minutes, then, you know, yeah. then she's okay with fishing. But she'll grab the rod. Yeah. She just don't want to fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, my, yeah, my, my kids, I got a five-year-old and a, and a three-year-old, and yeah. they're both obsessed with it already. I That's love it. That's so cool. I love it to death. She was, she was super obsessed in that youth, but then she kind of grew out of it. She's, yeah. 12, she's almost 12 now, and it's like, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I hope that doesn't happen to my kids. But, I hope not. Yeah. Um, one thing that we didn't touch into, I know mm-hmm. for, for, for sure, is – uh the 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 regular versus the high octane yeah let's touch into the difference of that a little bit so there's a couple chemicals uh i can't really say exactly what right but there's Mm -hmm. there's you know two bite stimulants basically is what it is that are uh different that that are added to the high octane and those are things that i've witnessed over the years when i would add those in Mm -hmm. i would notice that there were more bites at times okay not all the time because it would be like hey i'd tell everybody just go buy the high octane there's no need for for the other right um but certain times and it wasn't a water temp it wasn't a water clarity it wasn't even a species specific it was just like at certain times they were just it, it was a craving for the lack of better words you yeah. know what i mean so yeah yeah and you you said i mean but if you ask me right now keith which one would you pick i'd probably pick the high octane if i went to buy one yeah. i mean honestly like i just feel like uh yeah i mean again i still am torn on that question i've been asked it a lot it's like if you're gonna test it if you're gonna test one test my high octane yeah okay yeah. and i think you're gonna find you're gonna you're gonna be a sold customer you're coming back yeah yeah and you said that the egg cure was the original yeah. right yeah that was the original and then the the shrimp cures were uh, modifications to the the ultimate egg cure gotcha yeah so gotcha. different some different chems and stuff like that that in different proportions and different things that um yeah yeah, that's one thing I haven't done yet. Is I have some of the ultimate egg gear. I haven't done any country bidding yet, so yeah, I'm so definitely I mean, going to be doing that. Yeah, and if you go right to the ultimate egg gear website, the formula and the the whole the whole schematics on how to make coon shrimps right on there. Now you can do ultimate egg gear by itself, or you can mix two of them. Yeah, if yeah. you want the most vibrant vibrant coon shrimp, um, this is a combination of ultimate egg cure and ultimate shrimp cure UEC, yeah. usc and you can see the color of these yeah they're a bit different and i brought some in that are on oh no, those are just straight uec and yeah. by themselves and you can see that those are even more of a bright God, pink isn't that crazy they're looking? gorgeous dude yeah that's they're just gorgeous. straight and again down in the bottom here you can kind of see mm-hmm. the i need to add a little bit more rock salt there yeah yeah be paying attention um but these are the most recent that we've done and these were straight high octane Mm -hmm. or no they were straight shrimp cure sorry i didn't do high octane but yeah you can take those home if you want sweet thank you you i appreciate that fresh jar for you hell yeah you want to get into your orange juice bottle now uh we could talk about that yeah Yeah. so you know 
I've always messed around with with oils, bait oils, and stuff like that. And I've I've spent my time uh, mixing things. And I was talking to Steve Croak here. You know, um, people have, people have fish around me for years over on the Lewis. You know, in the fall time, I'll spend a lot of time up there uh, to get an edge on on the game. Mm-hmm. To not have to be there at daylight, basically, I can show up at eight o'clock and not worry about the early morning bite. Yeah, I can just show up. Uh, I wanted to design and develop something that gave me the edge. Right. Right. Um, This and many different formulas of this, I have a couple of them here that I brought in uh, from my boat. Um, Want to sniff that? Help yourself. But when you shake this up, you'll see, and I had shaken this up earlier, but it starts out looking like that, more of a clear liquid. Mm -hmm. But when you shake it up, you see how that really turns to like an an, an orange juice. Yeah. (laughs) So... Uh, I don't remember what guide it was, but there was a guide on Lewis River. They there was quite a few times where I would come into the hole, they just leave. Yeah, yeah, they would. <laughs> they'd be like, "Oh, here comes Keith. Like, yeah. let's just let's go." Um, but anyway, I, I always found that to be humorous. But I would set this up on my rail, my gunnel, <laughs> and they'd be like, "What's in that? Yeah. What is that? That stuff right there?" So when you smell this, once it's shaken up, yeah, what do you smell? Mm. I can't pinpoint it. There you go, guys. I gave you a chance. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> I gave you a chance. Yeah. yeah. There you go. And I mean, that's an honest, I can't pinpoint it, right? Yeah. I mean, that's not made up. That's no. you being straight up. That's No, that's me being genuine. Yeah. Look at it. Yeah. See that? Yep. It gets nice and foamy. Mm-hmm. Smell that one. And now that it's shaking up a little bit. Yeah. Let's see yeah the shaking it up just brings it wide open vibrant oh know? yeah it lays it on you yeah and that's what it's all about yeah so there's there's some things that yeah doubles triples quadruples yeah these make that happen yeah. okay I, i've talked to steve you know again do i want to do it it's not for the money guys yeah it ain't for the money i, I have a great job things are great things are good uh this is this is about helping people yeah. you know I, I brought it back out. Steve and I had a long conversation. It's about helping people, you yeah. know, giving them successes. I My my phone number is on the website. Yeah. Call me, text me. If you guys have questions about fishing, you know, I think, t- you know, tomorrow morning I was just sharing with you before we started the show. There's a there's a fine guy that uh, out of the Oregon area there that, that had messaged me, said he was thinking about getting some shrimp gear and he wanted to go out on Friday. Mm-hmm. And, but he didn't know. And I was like, don't go troll, man, go anchor. Like yeah. it's, it's anchor time. This water temps climb and these fish are going to start pushing through quicker and it's going to get harder to catch them on herring. Even when right. the water is in great trolling condition in the Columbia, it's very low, yeah. but these fish, they start to get, they just kind of lock up. But when you get in a decent travel lane, having quick fish wrapped and I mean, wrap your quick fish with one of these coon shrimp. Okay. I mean, it's like people wrap with quick fish with, with sardines or, you know, tuna bellies or whatever it may be wrap them with one of these scent sponges. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like put those, wrap it on the belly, pull the head off, pull the tail feathers off, just wrap it just like you would watch what happens. Yeah. It's game over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you even got, you even got, you know, millennial bait that's doing mooch. You've got Brecken that's doing the, uh, bits. the bits. Yeah. yeah. Bits. Like there, there's going to be, there's going to be options out there for wrapping coon shrimp on your stuff and just having it just be the same as a can of tuna. You there know, you go. Yeah. Su- same super, sort of super thing. malleable, super easy to spin wrap fish. up. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. Spin yeah. fish, the, the plastic cut plugs, you know, stuff them and troll them. I mean, that's a super easy way to do it. Right. You don't yeah. have to even, all you gotta do is just go to the store, grab the, grab the shrimp off the shelf the cure and you know limited or millennial i'm sure his stuff works too yeah yeah you know um yeah i've i'm really excited i'm really excited to try all of it yeah so yeah absolutely yeah so um i I started to touch into it there for a minute um i was really really excited to to get you on the podcast because you're you're one of the guys that you you have this wealth of knowledge and you Mm -hmm. want to share it you know like a lot of guys they're gonna go out and they're gonna catch their fish Mm mm-hmm you want other people to catch the fish too. And that's, I do. I mean, I've had my today's showboating. Yeah. Okay? I mean, I, I, again, I, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but yeah. you know, it, I've had years of very, very, I mean, I was, let's go back to the early two thousands. I mm. was so far ahead of everybody. It wasn't even close. I yeah. mean, I had, you know, nicknames, super bait and <laughs> Michael Jordan and all these sort of things that people would call me on the river. And it's like, it, look, man, I just, 
my brain works in a different way. I've got ADHD that I'm, I can't slow down. I can't stop thinking. And my brain nonstop for 25, 30 years, all it thought about was how do I make fish bite? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and like, like literally my, that was how my brain thought. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you know, cause I'm, I'm, I'm 25, you're yeah. 48, you know, 48. it's this younger generation. It's cool mm -hmm. having somebody in the older generation that is willing to, to give this knowledge out Yeah. because like, where are we going to be without it? You know? Like, yeah. I mean, it takes, it takes somebody going and trying and experimenting. Right. Yeah. Uh, well, and I'll be, I'll be the first to say that, you know, my generation, we don't have the work ethic to try to experiment for <laughs> 30 years, it's, you know, it's harder to come by. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Do you have anything else you wanted to touch into or? Uh, yeah. I mean, last thing would probably be, you know, last little trick up the sleeve that, that we could, that we could share with people would be, you know, high octanes, ultimate egg cures, you know, the regular shrimp cure, uh, brining your bait fish. Okay. And not just your herring yeah. and, and whatnot, but actually your fillets. Yeah. So like if you're going to wrap with sardine or something like that. Yeah. Or... Whatever it may be, tuna belly, yeah. sardine, mackerel, you know, I mean, whatever you're going to use. You gotcha. know, yeah. Those bite stimulants are important. You know what I mean? There's, yeah, yeah. there's things again, I'll reiterate it. I've, I've spent my time studying what they want and why, mm -hmm. how to get them to open their mouth when they're laying there, yeah. when, they're, when they're pressured, you know, no, this doesn't mean that you're going to go out and catch 5 million fish, right? right. You still got to have experience. You still got to have ability to present. You still got to have all these other things. Yeah. Uh, but if you can do those things right. Yeah. Uh, and you have fish in the hole, it's, it's going to be a game changer. I told you just before we started the show, I got a live scope, right? Oh I'm on, yeah, yeah. I'm on day three with my live scope. Yeah. I can attribute the six fish, you know, the other day, uh, seven bites, six fish the other day, almost half of them to live scope. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the baits, the bait works, right? But mm -hmm. I, but what, but what I would have normally have done, not seeing those fish on the live scope, I would have caught the few, I think I caught two or three out of there. Um, and it's April 1st, right? Yeah. I mean, like it's early to catch even that many fish. And yeah. I would have been like, my brain would have been playing tricks saying, dude, you got them all. Yeah. Go find more. The live scope told me I didn't get them all. Yeah. I could see the fish underneath me. So yeah. I sat on them and just waited and waited. And I think it was like 15, 20 minutes. And all of a sudden, uh, 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 there's another one. Yeah. And then 15, 20 minutes later, uh, 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 and it's like, oh my word, I'm watching these fish come <laughs> up and swirl around and mess around and, 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 you know, kind of swing by these baits and walk. I mean, it's like, it's like a video game, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you get a, you get a guy with a wealth of knowledge like you have and, you know, high quality bait and stuff with a live scope. It's not even fair. And I'd hate to be a Chinook salmon or steelhead or anything. It is, it is. It's not even fair to the fish. <laughs> I, day two, you know, I fished with Steve Mills out of Oregon there. Uh, fine fisherman. Uh, Owen Hayes came out for the day. Oh yeah. We yeah. got off to a slow start that, you know, we we're running around and looking in the places they were the day before. Uh, they weren't there. Right. Yeah. And I mean, like I would mark one and, and, and then that we've went up, went up to one of the holes and I saw three fish. And, and so I, I was like, geez, guys, this is the most fish we've seen yet. And in, <laughs> in the three holes we fished, let's, let's put some pressure on these fish and see if we can move them. Uh, it took, it took a little bit of effort. I, one of the fish, I, I literally first passed through, um, I, I was, I mean, I, I had buck fever, man. I was excited from the day before we'd hooked so many and I was just amped and ADHD and hard. And yeah. I, my rod goes, er, er, and I just wham, stuck him for a second and off he comes. And oh, I'm like, man. what am I doing, Keith? <laughs> Gee, many Christmas, you know, it's like, it's early, man. These springers are my favorite to eat. Yeah. yeah. Just got excited. Yeah. Yeah. You're so, your favorite to eat and you're catching release. And you're right. Yeah. Right off the get go. So <laughs> yeah. now I know there's two left in the hole, at yeah. least that I can see. And so I'm like, gosh, dang it. All right. Well, let's sit here and see if we can get these other two to go so we made like three passes on them and they weren't touching nothing so yeah. i reeled up and put a spinner blade on mm. with my coon shrimp oh gotcha yeah. dropped it back down guess what happened yeah one of them about ripped the rod out of my hand oh, i really? let him take it take it take it but yeah i set the hook and yeah game over yeah yeah uh that was pretty cool yeah. we ended up later in the day um ended up later in the day tripping over a school of fish though we you know again we'd looked earlier we'd fished that hole earlier they weren't there yeah there was no fish in that hole and then we come back down and it was just one of those, I'm idling over it. And all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, hey, there's like five of them right there. And I yeah. turn around and I drive back up. Uh, yeah. Game over. Yeah. Yeah. That's Got awesome, it. man. That is so awesome. Well, shit. I think we're, we're nearing, oh, we're over our hour mark. Oh right? boy. <laughs> we, uh, we got into it there a little bit. So, yeah. well, um, we'll take a second. We'll kind of recap, 
Um, obviously we went over the dam counts. We went over our cold mm-hmm. water strong giveaways. We mm-hmm. got some shrimp cure thrown in there now. Thank you again for that. Yeah, I'll throw you a couple more bottles too. You can give away. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Um, we touched into uh, a little bit of your background, a yeah. little bit of the background of ultimate egg cure, ultimate shrimp cure, uh, got into some basics, got into some uh, experimental stuff or not. I mean, obviously not quite experimental for you, but yeah. no. some cool things for guys to try. Right. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's a game changer. These have been in there for what? 50, yeah. Man. An hour. Yeah. It feels like 15 minutes. Yeah, but... while we were talking there and I got lots more to share. It's just, you know, as we go through seasons, we'll, yeah, I think what we'll do is maybe we'll connect again. Yeah. Well, I'd think? love to. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll, I'd we'll love get, to. We'll get through the spring Chinook season yeah. and, uh, you know, get into summer steel. If we want to talk summer steel, we can do mm-hmm. that. I want to talk fall Chinook. Lord have mercy. Watch out. That's my game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fall I Chinook remember is, I was, uh, game. I was hover fish in the mouth of the Lewis next year, last year. Oh yeah. It, it was it was crazy to watch, by the way, because I was brand new to brand new to hover fishing. I it didn't was even like, know you're out there. Yeah, yeah. It was like my shit. I think it was my second time hover fishing ever. Yeah. And uh, what happened? You messed them up. <laughs> 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 to, to be a little bit less. You were really out there. I, I, yeah, I swear to God, I, I was didn't even know. Right next to you. Really? Yeah. And that's and that's how I've channeled my brain is. I don't, <laughs> you know, again, I don't pay attention. Well, you know, what's funny is this is before the. Uh, I think it was before the ultimate egg cure was released, but it was definitely before it the was. ultimate shrimp cure. Yeah. I didn't even realize I, first of all, I didn't even know who you were, okay. but you started posting these videos and I was like, I know that dude. Yeah. You know, like, okay. But yeah, it, it was, it was fun to watch, man. And, uh, and I'm definitely looking forward to doing some more of that this year. That's but so cool. I really want to be doing some, some on the water podcast stuff too. So I'll shoot one in my boat. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go out and wreck some fish yeah. and shoot one in my boat. We'll yeah. go down to the mouth of Lewis when that gets popping, you know, oh, yeah. late August and yeah. you know, first week of September or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. As long as we can get a day with some decent wind. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll find one. Yeah. Make yeah. it work. Yeah. Well, the, the, the audio is where the wind uh, will screw you. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think about that. Yeah. But cool. Um, yeah, shit. Take take a second, plug yourself, plug your um plug your 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 website, your YouTube, yeah. uh Facebook, uh, all of it. Yeah. Tell guys where they can find you. For sure. You know, I mean, as as we spoke earlier, a lot of the retailers, you know, you got Bob's uh just working from north south, sport co up north and fife, you got Bob's, you got you know, Edge Pro Shops, you got Anglers West, Fishermen's, um, lots of guys out east, you know, that are retailing, mm-hmm. you know, if you have to, uh, Amazon, okay, guess what? Yeah. Amazon picked it up. Oh, really? Isn't that crazy? That's killer. Yeah. So for any of you guys that are in those places that are a little bit harder to get to these uh, shops that, yeah. that are retailing, Amazon, man, who doesn't yeah. Amazon, right? Yeah, that's right. So I thought that was pretty neat. Just learned that this last week. That's um, awesome. But yeah, that... Uh, bestcoonshrimpcure.com okay okay that's the website for the ultimate shrimp cure um and then ultimateaidcure.com mm-hmm. i have lots of extra tutorial stuff on there videos that you can go watch on there um a lot of um you know just there's pl- blogs and things that i write and if you want to go learn there's just there's just lots to take from there yeah. um the facebook pages are growing like crazy yeah. you know those are obviously easy to find ultimate egg cure ultimate shrimp cure instagram same ultimate ultimate egg cure ultimate shrimp cure and then tiktok yeah believe it or not i'm a tiktoker at the age of 48 <laughs> what the hell yeah yeah <laughs> my kid got me yeah. that are one. you doing your little trendy dances or? well i ain't got that <laughs> down yet but <laughs> yeah cool man that's awesome so all right man well uh i really appreciate you coming on man it's yeah. been a it's been an absolute yeah. blast yeah for sure and uh and we'll absolutely do it again yeah i'd like to yeah. i'd like to do it again and and again we'll get you out fishing and yeah. you know other people out there um you know reach out reach out and 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 i gave away a couple of hooded sweatshirts to the, here just recently mm. for the best winter steelhead picks you know with, yeah. with the cure used yeah. uh expect that again with the spring chinook so awesome. you know save your best spring chinook picks when using the cure and I'll uh, invite people to post those pics here towards the end of the spring Chinook season and, you know, toss out some hoodies and things like that. So yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Awesome. Sounds great, man. Well, uh, thank you everybody for tuning in to, uh, what is this episode 12? I think 12 weeks we've been doing this now. Wow. It's 